Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today we've got this fun, spooky mixed media project and I'm gonna take you behind the scenes on how I design a project that I'm gonna teach in a class. And the class for this is gonna take place at michaels.com on October 20th at 8 p.m. So I will leave a link in the video description for that if you're interested. So when I start designing something, it usually doesn't go as smoothly as how I teach it and it doesn't go in the exact same steps. So I'm gonna show you what I did here to design it, but then I'm gonna tell you the differences on how I teach it. I thought that might be kind of a little bit of an interesting fun, just peek behind the scenes. So I started off with a black ink tense pencil and I just sketched in a raven or a crow, whatever you like better, on a little piece of like wrought iron fence. And I'm just kind of um, like filling it in a bit because I can add water to this and then lock down that ink because it's an ink tense pencil by Derwin. And when that dries, it's gonna be permanent. So I can add gesso over it, I can collage over it, I can do all sorts of things and not not have to worry about my basic design getting um, getting trashed. Now, after I created the piece, I made a pattern for my students to have. So my pattern, my students can actually just transfer a pattern. Um, I'm giving this a dry because I want to make sure it's thoroughly dry before I go and add any wet medium on top. And like I mentioned, or I don't know if I mentioned, but this is a Crescent illustration board. Uh, you could also use mat board or any sturdy paper that you have, any sturdy watercolor paper, mixed media paper, poster board, anything like that's going to work because we're going to do stuff to the the surface that makes it accepting to other media. Now, this is where my idea was not as bright as I thought it was as I was designing because I wanted to collage over this, but then I wasn't going to be able to see my design anymore. Hence, I make a pattern for my students. So if you were taking this class, what I would say to you and what you would get in your kind of welcome email is... Um, if you like the look of the collage background, collage it on your paper or illustration board first and then transfer your pattern. So that's how I change things up from designing a project myself or creating artwork just for fun and turning it into a class. So um, that's a step. It's like, have you ever done a project around your home? Maybe you tiled your bathroom or laid some new flooring in a room and you're like, man, next time I do this, I'm going to do it so much more efficiently because I'll know how to do it. Well, it's the same thing with art. The first time you do a certain technique, you're going to be all thumbs and you're going to be like, what was I thinking here? And then you do it again and it's like, takes you half the amount of time and half the amount of stress and you get twice as good of an outcome. So art's just like the same thing. The best way to learn how to do something is to do it. You know, you can watch all the videos in the world, but if you don't actually take the time to do it, um, it, uh, you know, it doesn't, uh, it doesn't really click, I don't think. At least it doesn't click quite as well. So now what I'm doing here is I'm using some ink tense pan paints to fill in the uh, some of the background. I want really intense jewel tones here. And this pattern paper that I had, it was an old pattern paper in my stash from Bow Bunny and it had pumpkins and like sheet music. Now, if you had pumpkin rubber stamps in permanent ink, you could stamp on some sheet music and do the same thing. I don't get rid of stuff just because it goes out of style or it stops being produced because if I bought it because I liked it, I'm gonna like it whether it's in style or not. If you buy something because it's trendy, when the trend goes away, you probably aren't gonna like it anymore, but if you buy it because you like it, regardless of the trends, it's always gonna be in style. As long as it's a good quality product, it will work for you. So here I'm using some metallic paints and I am filling in the, um, the moon here because I want it to have a little bit of glisten and the Derwent metallic paints have a couple colors in there that are kind of more glittery and sheer versus being more um, opaque and that's what I wanted to use on my collage paper so I could still see it. I also flicked on some silver which is an opaque color that they have in the pan paints to give it like a starry feeling. So now since I you know completely <laughs> obliterated my design when I started collaging I'm just kind of sketching it back in again which is fine because I'm pretty comfortable drawing but um, like I said my students will have a pattern for this so they won't have to um have to deal with that and uh, uh but I actually kind of like this like you know to and fro dance that you do with the painting as you you have something really good oh then you obliterate it then you get it back and then you obliterate it then you bring it back from the edge again <laughs> it's just kind of part of the process and I just think it's so much fun um the products I'm using here are by Derwent they sponsor my classes I do on Michaels and I do have a free class coming up on um this week later this week it's on the 6th you know what I'm gonna link both of them the free class is on Thursday and we're gonna it's all about the uh, the Derwent pan paints and I'm going to show you different like techniques you can do so even if you don't have any of these products um, you can do them with like, the watercolors you have and uh, just kind of get a little more familiar with the stuff you already own but also you'll learn about these in case it's something you've been interested in and, uh, and that one's free the crow mixed media 
project is $20, just to give you a heads up there. But uh, I'll link both of those down below. And here you have the time lapse if you want to um, uh, kind of go by that and get some inspiration that way too. Hey, I'm here for it all the different ways. You know, I'm here to support you. Um, one thing I like about the Derwin ink tense pan paints is that they are actually quite opaque. They're more opaque than the pencils. Um, so if you were doing this with other products, I'd probably recommend you try maybe a gouache um, or even acrylic. It just depends on what you have and what you like better. Um, the Derwent pan paints have a little bit of a liftable quality to them. Um, like I like to mix... Um, mix clear gesso with my water when I activate the ink tents in the background. Um, and that will give me a little bit of tooth. So if I want to go over with some pencils, I can do that. But, um, you know, it's all down to what you have and what you like using. I say experiment with what you've got. And, um, and it's a lot of fun, but like the instructions I give to my students before they come to class to be prepared so we can do this in an hour and a half is to collage your paper down with Mod Podge or whatever you have, matte medium. Then, um, I would recommend you transfer the pattern and then you clear gesso over the whole thing. And that way you have tooth and you're ready to go on with any of the products that you want to try after that. Um, mostly the gesso though is for the, um, is for your color pencils. If you want to do color pencils accents later to get them to stick, it's not, um, it's not required that you have that, but I think that if you do like to add colored pencils on top, it does give you a lot of extra flexibility. You can even do pastels on top. I know everyone's excited about pastels. We did so many pastels last month. It's a great surface for pastels. So, um, clear gesso over like an underpainting in mixed media. If you take one thing away from this time lapse today is try that technique because then you can do pencils on top. Then you can do pastels on top. Then you can do so many things, crayons on top and really get that color payout you're probably after. Now it looks a little weird here because I put that metallic paint, the opaque metallic paint over my crow. And then I was, I went to all sheen. So it's like this crow is just, just the reflections, right? But if you look at a bird, you look at a crow and it like flutters its wings or it turns, you see bits of iridescence, but, but then you see the contrast of the black feathers, you know, it just depends on what part of the feathers the light's hitting. So that's the effect I wanted to get. So I'm going back in with the black Derwent ink tense pan paint there and I am um, painting around my highlights basically. It's almost like uh, I'm putting the shadows back in or I'm putting the non-reflective parts back in and then you start to see the form of the bird and the texture and the direction of the feathers. So, you know, the layering really adds so much depth and dimension into your mixed media work. When somebody says they're not happy with their painting, they failed, it's no good. Oftentimes I look at that and I'm like, you know, you just don't have enough layers. You're, you're just not done yet. If you're not happy with your work at the stage that it is, especially mixed, mixed media, when you have like basically the green light to try whatever you want, um, keep going, keep going and, and see what you can do. Um, and again, that's another reason I really love the Liquitex clear gesso um, over the, your first initial underpainting because it allows you to layer more and it just gives you more flexibility. And one bottle of, you know, Liquitex clear gesso will last you a long time. Um, I had one of the little sample sizes for years and then I finally just invested in a 32 ounce bottle and that's probably going to last me a decade. Um, but it's just so handy and it's so versatile. I've tried another brand of it and it just wasn't as good. I highly recommend the Liquitex brand. Um, and you can get that pretty much any store, any craft store. You can get it at Michael's, you can get it um, anywhere really. So it's an easy to come by brand. And I think it's because it's so reliable. I think that's why a lot of stores stock it. But get the clear because the clear will work with everything. And the clear has more uh, more grit to it than like the black or the white. So, you know, you can even prime something with white or black or prime a white or black paper or canvas board or whatever you have, matte board, and go over it with a clear. Now, it does have a little bit of like a milkiness to it. It's not like crystal clear, like, you know, a gloss medium would be because of whatever the pumice or marble dust or whatever is in there to give it the grit, but um, but it's pretty clear. And by the time you're adding stuff to it, um, you're not going to notice any sort of like of that residue of whatever the grit is. But here we're going in with the Derwent Chroma Flow pencils. Really any sort of wax base opaque pencil is going to work just fine for this. Grab your favorite. I've really been enjoying these Chroma Flow pencils and we're just using the 24 set. Um, so, you know, it's fairly affordable. Um, 
you know, you can use whatever you want, but an, a wax base so it's nice and opaque and you get that color payoff that you're after. And there you have it. This is what uh, this painting uh, took to bring to life. And I hope to see you in the class if you'd like to paint live with me and uh, take a little more time at it and, and do it a little easier than the way I did it. Thank you very much for watching this time lapse. I appreciate it. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below and give me a thumbs up before you go. Thanks for watching. Until next time, happy crafting.